Hello everyone, Mike Levin here. I'm going to do a really quick video. I have just downloaded PyCharm and I'm going to do the install. Now PyCharm comes highly recommended by my favorite podcaster Michael Kennedy from Talk Python to Me. And normally I'm a, either a Jupyter Notebook user or a Vim user. And uh, I figure with the type of coding I'm doing now, I might actually like to give uh, the other third big uh, possibility a try. Oh, by the way, I'm also a Sublime user, so maybe at some point I could do some comparison between doing uh, Python coding in Sublime uh, versus uh, PyCharm versus Jupyter Notebook versus Vim. Uh, that would make for an interesting video. But for right now, we were here. I mount the disk image. And now uh, Mac people always have a choice between double clicking it here just to run it and test it or to install it into uh, applications right away. Now I know I want this and I know I want it in applications so I'll just go ahead and install it like that. Now another thing that Mac people are not very familiar with is that when it comes time to run it you really want to eject your uh, disk image because otherwise you might be running the copy that's on there it has all its dependencies that's not what I wanted spotlight which Apple would stop moving things anyway PyCharm PyCharm CE that's the community edition and I'm not really going to do anything with it except for run it so this is the installing of PyCharm on Mac OS Sierra. You can import your settings from the previous version. I must have had this running before. Uh, I do not have a pre... No, okay, yeah, I mean, I've installed this on other machines, so... Uh, but I'm pretty sure I haven't done it here. JetBrains. They collect data from you. Please read and accept terms and conditions. This must be what pays for PyCharm. Huh. PyCharm Community Edition. Okay, we accept. Otherwise, we're probably not going to be able to run it. Keymap scheme, IDE scheme, editor and fonts. Click to preview. Okay, that's how code's going to look in there. Oh, I see. There is the Darkula. Yeah, I definitely prefer that. Much more similar to my uh, traditional, although not the way I do it in here. So the question is, do I want PyCharm? I'm going to stick to default and get PyCharm out of the box experience before I start customizing. Enable opening files and projects from the command line. No. Script path. Okay. Create a new project. Sure, why not? Entitled. Okay, versions 3.4. Interesting. I would have expected I'd be on 3.5, uh, but that'll give me something to Google later on to uh, make sure I'm on the right version of Python in PyCharm. There you have it. Like PyCharm installed and running, I guess I could, should try and do a, a hello world, right? But I don't know how easy it is, is it to do the very first thing here. Search everywhere, go to file, recent file, navigate. New file. Hello.py. Hello world. And somewhere there should be a run over there. Run. It's like an intelligence test, isn't it? The thing that looks like run is ghosted. Let's see what that is. Code. 
run. The word run. That'll do it. But you can't. So I'm missing something. Anyway, this is the beginning of getting started with PyCharm. Still, world's easier than Vim, I'm sure, for most people out there. So, uh, video coming up. Sublime versus PyCharm versus Vim versus Jupyter Notebook. See you then.